Hi, I'm Dawn Kavanaugh, APQS National Education Director. Today we're going to learn how to use a long arm machine and rulers safely so that you can stitch in the ditch, do cross hatching work. There are so many different types of rulers available on the market today that you'll find lots of different uses for those. And an APQS machine has the right foot to make that simple and easy to do. Some tools that you're going to need to make this simple will be an expanded base. This accessory slips right onto the throat of your particular quilting machine. On the Lucy, for example, it's cut out to fit right over the throat, slip right on, and then it rests. It's very easy to install. That gives me a very large surface on which to hold my rulers once this is slipped under the quilt. Notice as I move the quilting machine around, the table also moves with the machine. So you don't have to worry about adjusting that. It just stays put right there. I'm going to slide this back over to this sample block that I've got on the batting so that we can try this out. Okay. Along with an expanded base from APQS, you'll receive one ruler to get you started. You may find lots of different accessory rulers available out on the marketplace. The key is to find one that is about six to eight inches long and about two and a half to three inches wide with your first one. That's going to give you the most safety and security as you quilt. Let's talk a little bit about some of the guidelines to do a good job with the ruler, but also to keep everything safe and secure. If you think about the needle of a quilting machine like a rotary cutter, theoretically if we've got a very long ruler and a cutter blade next to that, we should be walking our hand down the ruler as we cut our fabric. The same is true using a long arm quilting machine. I've got a nice 12 inch ruler here and if I was trying to stitch along this pink and blue seam line with that, I might be tempted to start with my fingers down near the actual foot of the machine. But once I reach my fingertips, I no longer have control over that ruler. The farther away I get from my fingertips, the more chances there are for that ruler to slip up and actually slip on top of the foot and cause damage to the ruler or potentially uh, damage the machine in some way. Not to mention the fact that my line is not going to be very straight. So as you quilt, you'll want to slide the ruler or your hand so that whichever is holding that ruler is securing it right across from the needle. Since I'm left-handed, I tend to hold most of my rulers with my left hand. So I will slide the machine along from my thumb to my pointer finger. When the needle reaches that pointer finger, I'll walk my hand down the ruler again. This particular ruler by Hartley Manufacturing also has a convenient handle for, for you. Some people prefer the handle. It gives you extra de dexterity. And some people prefer a flat piece of plexiglass. You need to experiment a little bit to find out which one is right for you. One other tip I'm going to share with you to safely use rulers is to look at the block that you're going to work on and figure out where the seam allowances are. Unlike a home sewing machine when I'm stitching in the ditch, I can pull the fabric apart with my fingers to expose that seam allowance very clearly. Then when I lift my fingers up, the top fabric relaxes back over that, hiding the stitches. Well, that's not really possible on a long arm quilting machine since we're using a tool to help guide us. So to give yourself more accuracy, if at all possible, try to hold the ruler so that it's on the low side of the seam. In other words, the part of the seam where the seam allowances are not. If the camera can zoom in just a little bit on this yellow fabric, for example, you may be able to see that the seam allowance has been pressed to the dark or the blue side. There's just a bit of a ridge right here. If I try to hold my ruler on top of the blue fabric, especially with puffy batting, that's going to push that blue fabric out and I'll stitch next to it thinking I'm very, very close. But when I lift the ruler up, that fabric will relax back, revealing my stitches, and it's going to look like I actually missed the ditch. So whenever possible, try to hold the ruler on the opposite side where the seams are not pressed. That will prevent that from happening. So we'll do just a little bit of stitching in the ditch on this block to see how it's going to work for you to give you an idea of how to control your particular machine. 
I'll move up to the corner and I'll use this Lucy's needle up and down feature to bring my bobbin thread up right in the corner. Grab all of those thread tails. I'm going to come back and do some tacking stitches. I'll hold that needle up and down button in and ever so slightly move the machine along that seam line. Now on this side, as I told you normally, I'd be holding this if possible with my right hand and driving with my left. So that will give me control. The Lucy's handles have the controls exactly the same on each side, which makes that very easy to do. In fact, that's a, a nice feature of all of the APQS machines. I'm going to turn on the stitch regulator and set my stitches a slightly smaller so that they'll be hiding inside this ditch. Here we go. Notice that I stopped with the needle down. That's a great way for you to gain control as you need to slide your hand or slide the ruler. When I turned the machine off, it cycled the needle to the down position so I won't have a hiccup or a skip in my stitch. Now I can safely scoot the ruler down to the corner. When we make the corner, I'll show you how to safely hold the ruler along a horizontal. There I am at the corner. Now, depending on your uh, dexterity, if you're right-handed or left-handed, you may feel more comfortable with each of those. Ideally, I want support across the front of the machine with my fingers holding the ruler. That will allow me to steer either way. So that I can drive the machine a little better for you and keep my hand out of the way, I'll hold with my right and steer with my left. You may have noticed as I've been driving that I can't hold the ruler exactly on the seam. That's because there's a quarter inch difference from the needle to the edge of the foot. So I have to allow for that by holding my ruler one quarter of an inch away from the seam or where I want it to stitch. That's what we'll do right now. I'll take my time and stop and scoot the ruler again and do a little more. And stop and do a little more. And we're to that corner and pause. I'll stitch my way back up the block again. A little more. And we have one more to finish it off. When you reach the end, use your needle up and down to secure your threads at the end. I'll move it away and take one more stitch. And that will allow me to bring up a loop of bobbin thread that I can clip with a scissors. That will cut my thread tail. Sometimes it might be easier to actually turn the stitch regulator off and slow the speed of the motor down to give you even more control. Sometimes I'll do that when I'm stitching around applique or other curvy pieces so that it's easier for me to guide it along those seam lines. I'll do that for just one of these seams and then give you one more tip about using your rulers that will help you as you're searching the web for different styles. Let's go out to this last border, bring up that bobbin thread and secure it. Start with my needle in the down position. This time I'm going to turn the stitch regulator off and slow the machine's manual sewing mode down a little bit so that I can have more control. Use that same ruler and stitch in the ditch. This time you'll hear the motor sound at a constant speed because it's moving the needle constantly as we go.
there you got a little taste of what it sounds like and how it feels when you're actually stitching in the manual sewing mode. You'll have to experiment a little bit with what is the right speed for you. One last tip. Notice that uh, these rulers are new, fresh out of the box, and they slide around a lot, just like a rotary cutting ruler might do when you've just purchased that. That's sometimes nice when I'm trying to guide around pieces that I want to steer, but it's not so nice if it slips very easily on the fabric. So you might want to put something like uh, grips that you can purchase at your local quilt shop. Uh, this happens to be a rubber adhesive thin grip that you can put under the ruler. You can also buy uh, sandpaper dots that are available at a local quilt shop. Those mount to the underside of the ruler and are still uh, there to allow you to see through and use those marks as references, but also to make sure that the ruler can't slip. So that's it. Yes, you'll have to practice a little bit using a ruler, but it's really not all that hard. Keep those safety tips in mind and you'll be able to stitch in the ditch in no time with your APQS long arm.